Good morning. Welcome to our uh, afternoon reflection of um, following our Zoom meeting this morning where we looked at Acts 1, 6 to 14. And uh, we uh, last week were, were with Jesus uh, pre, pre his death um, in the upper room. Jesus was trying to calm his disciples uh, and he promises the Holy Spirit would come as an advocate and a, and a comforter is the other words we use for that. And um, uh, something would bond them into relationship with the Father in a, in a way, in a similar way to the way he'd been. And if we'd stayed with John's Gospel, we would have found them moving on to Jesus praying to be glorified and praying for his disciples, for, for God's protection, for their mission, for their ministry, uh, recognising the, the, the stuff they were going to face. But uh, today is also Ascension Sunday, and for Methodists it's Aldersgate Sunday. Um, Aldersgate's um, our kind of remembering of that um, John Wesley had a heartwarming experience. He, he was a priest already, but uh, it, his ministry wasn't going particularly well. He'd been out on mission in America, and he'd come back and somewhat disillusioned, I guess. And um, But John had gone to a prayer meeting somewhat reluctantly. He, he didn't really want to be there, I don't think. But while he was there, he felt his heart strangely warmed. And um, for those of us who are Methodists, we recognise in that description the an encounter with the Holy Spirit that revitalizes and rejuvenates. And just as Jesus' ministry kind of was uh, came to life through the anointing of the Spirit, his baptism, so for John, it marked a, a beginning of a new and hugely fruitful, powerful, globe-changing ministry, um, of which we're the kind of descendants in the faith, I suppose. Um, but we, uh, we also decided to move from John rather than staying with that to, to Acts, and to pick up the story of the Ascension and uh, this week saw Ascension Day. Um, Acts is written by the same person as Luke, uh, so people believe a physician who was known to Paul. Um, it was written in Rome, we think, and, uh, and around AD 60-62, which is significant because uh, just four years after uh, um, the end of, of the content of Acts, the people rose up and, and tried to uh, take back Jerusalem and what ended up happening was Jerusalem was sacked and the temple was destroyed so um, the uh, the environment of Acts is not that dissimilar from Jesus' death there's, the, um, there's, a, there's a people who want to, to overthrow the Romans there are people who seek freedom and liberation and are willing to do so by force and uh, it's into that context Jesus came as Messiah of which was, of course, fulfilling the role that the people of Israel saw as being the person who would do that. Um, he would have been a, a, a focal point, uh, a kind of lightning rod for, for that sort of passion and energy. And, and sure enough, loads of people were drawn to him and perhaps even some of the disciples initially drawn to him because they saw in him that. But of course, Jesus' death and his teaching said, this, I'm going to be a different sort of a Messiah. The Book of Acts is written... Um, it had a benefactor, uh, Theophilus had uh, commissioned the book and, and clearly somebody who was trying to live the way of the faith and wanted to draw on the stories and have them available to him but also something he could share with his community and we're fortunate of course to have it as part of the body of the, the work of the Bible. Um, Jesus uh, is, has risen and he's been appearing, it says at the start of Acts, so on several occasions over the 40 days and that 40 days resonates it's got uh, significant echoes throughout scripture we have the 40 years in the wilderness we have Jesus's 40 days in the wilderness it's it's always a period of becoming and forming and uh, cl drawing close to God after which something significant happens and so when you hear 40 days you should always kind of prick your ears up and the hairs on the back of your neck should go up and and, and ask what's going to happen something significant is going to happen and sure enough this this was significant the disciples were settled into a kind of new normal as in Jesus had risen so they got around the heads around that and he was appearing although he was kind of here there and everywhere and he and, and wasn't had the, didn't have the physical limitations he seems to have had before um, but they, they, they had him teaching them. Um, scripture says that he unpacked the scriptures for them, so they had a clearer view of what he was about. So rather than speaking in parables as he had done and walking with them while they practiced, 
praying for and he, healing people. He's now explaining in more clarity why he's come, what he was doing, and what sort of Messiah he is. And so um, when we start reading Acts 1, verse 6, and they, they gather around him and ask, Lord, are you this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? Jesus must have been pretty gutted, I think. Because that's back onto that old pattern of thinking of Jesus is there as a as a powerful person who's going to wrest control and bring liberation. He's going to fulfill that archetypal, powerful, warlike Messiah uh, mold. And and time after time, he's he's countered that. He spoke against it. He died. I mean, if anything else showed that he was going to be a different sort of Messiah, dying and being risen again. And he must have thought, gosh, I'm about to, I'm about to leave you and leave you with the keys of the kingdom and leave the church on earth. And, and you're going to be my hands and my feet and my voices and and my presence on this earth. And, and you're not getting it. And I, I, you must have heart must have sank. Um, and, and it made me reflect on on lockdown. Um, and, and for me, uh, we've been distanced from our churches, from each other for for what, eight, nine weeks now. And, and it's been hard, but it's it's shown me a new possibilities for church, for Christian faith, for sharing, for mission, for evangelism, for connecting with people, not just people about Christian faith, but neighbours uh, in a new way, in a deeper way. Um, our online conversations on Zoom particularly seem to allow us to go deeper with one another from the comfort of our homes. And, and to enable conversations with people who are, are perhaps um, housebound. Um, and so we, we've, we've, we've got a new pattern of being at the moment. And yet, and yet, as soon as the lockdown begins to diminish, people are kind of, how do we get back to normal? How do we get back to how things were? Uh, and much like Israel in the desert, they come out of slavery, remember? <laughs> out of slavery. God had, sh- had released them from slavery. He'd taken them on the journey to the promised land. They'd be given new rules to live by, a new pattern for life. He'd saved them from Pharaoh. He'd defeated Pharaoh's forces. He crossed, uh, he miraculously crossed the Jordan. And yet, almost as soon as they have that liberation, they're kind of, we want to go back. This is too hard. Uh, and rather than accepting the formation and the unknown, because it was to them, even though they had a vision of the promised land, they wanted to go back. They'd rather return to slavery than risk what freedom might be or the hard work to attain freedom. And and I'm particularly keen that that as church and as people of God, that that we don't just return without without thinking, without recognising the fruit of what we've gained, without recognising new possibilities for engaging and broadening our relationships and, and seeing the kingdom established in new places. And I'm quite fearful we'll, we'll lose out if we just simply return and fall into the pattern of the old ways. And Jesus, when he speaks to the disciples, um, he kind of says the same thing. He says, you know, something's coming, but just in the, in, for the meantime, wait. <laughs> Just wait. Don't don't go off half cocked. Interestingly enough, when the spirit comes to them, they they no longer have the confusion of of seeking a Messiah coming in power. They 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 seem to be in tune with God's plan in a way they never were before. Even after three years of teaching, if the twenty four seven with Jesus, the Holy Spirit suddenly they get it in a way they hadn't got before. And I I think we we can be forgiven for not always getting what God's doing and. Um, for not always having the clarity that God might want us to have. But but Jesus said, pray and and wait for the Spirit. And I think that same plea should go to us. Let's wait for the Spirit to guide us out of this. Let's not just follow blindly to what we had and let's not listen too carefully to what the world wants us to do. But let's think about what God wants us to do. So we wait. When he does begin to talk about, say, in verse 7, um, in response to what they've asked about that, he, he, he talks about power. They've asked about power, and he said, look, power is coming, but it's going to be in the form of the Holy Spirit, and you will be 
my witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria. And um, they've been unpacking that at Cliff College Live uh, this week. But but it's a huge it's a huge thing for them. Um, when he last sent them out as a 72, there are 120 now. He, he deliberately said, look, only go to the people of God, go to the Israel, don't go to Gentiles. But here, he's saying Jerusalem, that's not a comfortable place at the minute. There are people who are not happy with them as disciples. Uh, the, the forces of Rome may have depleted slightly as Passover was finished and the number of Jews in the city may have fallen from a million to 100,000 again, but still, it's not a secure place to be. But from there, Judea and Samaria, and that would have been a shock. Remember, the Samaritans and Jews had this long lasting enmity. Um, for those in Yorkshire, somebody suggested this morning, you know, we still have this thing about Lancashire, the War of the Roses still runs deep in terms of that ancient enmity. Um, it doesn't really exist, but still, for them, it was a live thing. And they really didn't, didn't like to be with one another. So that was a huge ask. And then the ends of the earth means Gentiles, means those not of the people of God. Um, and we find in that, in that request from Jesus echoes of scripture. He said, I come to fulfill scripture. And in Isaiah, we have the prophecy that Israel would be the route by which God brought the kingdom to the whole earth. So it shouldn't be a surprise, but yeah, it's enormous, isn't it? Um, and if I were to say to you, uh, tomorrow I'd like you to um, head off to, um, you know, some place in Africa and uh, begin your mission, you'd be kind of, I, I don't know how to start that. Um, and they couldn't. And the reason Jesus didn't send them out before is they didn't have the power, the advocate, the counsellor, the spirit with them. And so at this point, it is impossible. Um, and they're right to be fearful. And they're right to wonder whether it's even achievable. But the call's there. The call is there. Um, if we move on. Um, uh, chapter, verse 9 rather. Um, we then, having laid down the gauntlet and set that commission, um, Jesus is taken up into heaven. He ascends. Um, that event's captured different ways, different places, different gospels, different writings. Um, what we know physically is Jesus was no longer there and did not appear again uh, in the same form. But, but in terms of what God was doing, things are moving on things are moving forward and that's the point in this and they uh, the cloud that descends and obscures things is the same sort of cloud depicted that was on the transfiguration and uh, the cloud what when jesus became transfigured it's the same cloud described on mount sinai when god came and gave moses commandments it's the mystery of god the same cloud that descended on the tent of meeting in the in the desert as it traveled with the israelites through the wilderness so we have the mystery of God, and that's what we're saying. God's now moving, and things are going to change. Um, and they're looking into the sky, and two angels appear, and that echoes the revelation at the tomb. At the tomb, um, the angels appear and say to Mary, why are you looking in the tomb? He's gone. Um, you know, things are moving on. Don't stay here. You can't cling on to this. You need to see where God's going now, where Jesus is going now. And the, the men of heaven... In a similar way, echo that. There's no use looking up into the sky. We move forward with our mission, with our ministry, and go and do what Jesus has asked you to do. The next part of the uh, scripture, um, plowing forward to verse 12, they kind of turn into the practicalities of fulfilling that mission. They, the, the bits entitled Matthew has chosen to replace Judas. We don't quite get there, but they're thinking. We need a full team if we're going to do this. Gosh, we're only 11 now. We need at least 12. Um, we need people who can guide and lead the growing cohort of believers. But they return to Jerusalem, um, as they've been told. And we hear uh, at least the apostles return, and we have the list of the, uh, the apostles given. In some ways, they're in the same boat we are. They had their commission. They've been told to take the good news of God to the ends of the earth. They had no longer Jesus with them. Jesus had ascended into heaven, not gone, but now with them, not physically, but in a different spiritual way. And they, unlike us, had yet to receive the Holy Spirit. We've had that gift for us, but 
we're here between those events and the not yet. When the angel spoke to the men who were looking up to the sky, he said he's going to come back one day and you will know about it. So no point stressing and faffing about he's going to come. It will be as obvious as a nose on your face. It will be back in clouds and everybody will know about it. But between then and now, you've got things to do. You've got to spread the gospel. And we're in that place. They were called to the ends of the earth. And um, you're saying, you know, gosh, what does that mean for us? What if we're called? But actually, there are people in our neighborhood who have yet to hear about Jesus, who have yet to experience the gifts of the Spirit. And we're called to be a witness to them as much as we are to everywhere else. So what do we do now? We do what they do. We wait. We seek the Spirit's guidance. We pray. We seek discernment. But we're ready to go. And the Spirit is calling. And I think it's calling us to do new things in new ways. And, and, we're, and we're ready to go. But, but between us at this time, let's discern. Let's look at the new opportunities before us, the, the neighbours we've got to know. Let's look at the new platforms. I've got used to, to this, and some of you similarly have, have, have gained confidence in using social media and new forms of, um, of sharing and ministry. We find a combination of waiting and praying and expectancy, and we wait for the Spirit to lead us out. So I pray that you too will be waiting that you too will be ready when the spirit gifts come and if you're seeking jesus and are seeking where god is in the world then you could do worse than reading some of these stories for yourselves in scripture because god speaks to us through them and nudges us through them and to to listen to one another we have this wide-ranging selection that i'm offering this talk there are many other people sharing their discernment their understanding of scripture online let's engage with that let's share together let's find the future that god has for us one of the things that comes out of that is that that prayer happened in a in a, in a room and gathered together uh, and that's an important part of that discernment process that we don't do this praying alone that we don't do this discernment alone the holy spirit works in community it works in gathered people and um, if you've not joined our zoom on sunday meetings we it, the, the benefit of that is it's just not me spieling it's other people sharing their discernment and gathering what i reflect is a combination of our sharing in the morning and um, and that's a wonderful thing but it's also an opportunity to pray for one another about the specifics of life and the challenges of life at the minute so i invite you to find the link on the websites uh, aiken methodist Holgate, or, or um, Southlands websites or on our Facebook pages and come and join us one Sunday you'll be very very welcome to do that likewise if you're not ready to kind of meet loads of people all at once then then do drop me a line on on social media uh, and I'd be really happy to talk to you to have a chat to have an email conversation whatever it is that you need at this time but I'd, I'd also be interested to hear your voice about where you feel called and how you feel we should respond to the spirit at this time so I pray, Lord, that you would speak to each one of us, that you would gather us together in those groups that will help us discern your calling and that you would equip us as you equip your first disciples to follow that call, to fulfil your mission and ministry, to bring your love, your gospel, your good news to the whole of this earth, to all its people, but to hold the whole of creation. Shape us and form us, we pray, that we might respond to you. And in the meantime, give us peace and protection in our waiting and in our lockdown. In Jesus' name. Amen. Take care and see you another Sunday. Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn. Face toward you.